on the national flag, the Native Islam flag, were uh, F, J, E. And on the staff, the staff of the flag was I. And the letter I stood for Islam. And that was to say to us that in Islam, you are promised freedom, justice, and equality. And I remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the earlier days when I was a, a preteen and a teenager, and even a little, little after that. Uh, whenever you walked into the temple door, you opened the temple door, the first thing you would see, uh, if the speaker wasn't speaking, would be that blackboard with that picture on it, saying what I just gave to you. And uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would hardly ever miss saying on Sundays when he gave his speeches, his talk, he, uh, his message, he wouldn't hardly ever miss saying that Islam is freedom, justice, and equality. That went into me as a boy and as a, pre as, as, as a teenager. It went into me. And uh, I knew, I was shown pictures of our people, actual lynchings that were in, still, my father saved the old papers. He saved the old papers that showed actual lynchings of our people were hanging from a tree. One picture I remember seeing looked like to me it was at least five, it might have been as many as seven or eight black men hanging from trees where they list them in a, in, 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 a, in a group. They list a number of them, not one person, and they were hanging in a group. I remember him giving me a picture I don't like to tell you about it, I don't like to look at it, I don't like to think about it. But I have to tell you, because uh, what I'm going to bring before you, it helps me, helps my delivery and to make the delivery clear to you to tell you this. Did, didn't you see how I was affected as a child? Yeah, they had one picture of a black man hung on a tree and uh, a fire, firewood had been put up under him and the flames were burning, burning, his, uh, burning his, uh, him from foot up, burning him from the feet up. Um, a child doesn't forget things like that, okay? So, my parents made sure that I know, know, knew the bad treatment that our people got under white supremacist rule. They wanted to make sure I know that, and they made sure I knew it. And um, now, here's a child, knowing how bad his treat, people are treated by the ruling people, the whites. And he hears that Islam is freedom, justice, and equality. What do you think he's going to remember? That Islam is a verse from the Quran? or that Islam is the religion of, of the Muslims of the world, or that Islam, uh, Islam's prophet is Muhammad, the prophet. You think he's going to remember that? No. He's going to remember that Islam is freedom, justice, and equality. And it goes into it to the child so deeply and makes such a strong and irasable uh, 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 imprint, unremovable imprint, that it lives with that child until death. I will live with that until death. Islam will always mean more to me as freedom, justice, and equality than it means to me as, as anything else. And if it wasn't a true promise to the human soul of freedom, justice, and equality, if God hadn't inspired me and guided me to discover that that's exactly what it is, a promise to the human soul of freedom, justice, and equality, if he hadn't guided me to discover that, I wouldn't want anybody's Islam. Right. The way they read it from, um, this is Savior's Day. I'm giving you a Savior's Day message right now. The way that the world Muslims read the Quran to people, yes. to me, I could just, I might as well take Buddhism. I might as well take Christianity. I'm not so impressed. See, I don't need a different identity. Some of you all shop for another identity. Being black or Negro or colored people is just too much for you. You want to get away from all of that. So you like to be called Muslim. And you like to speak Arabic. And you like to dress like people overseas. I don't need that. And I love you just as you are. But I don't need that. I need freedom. I need justice. I need equality. Equality of opportunity in this world. Don't block me. Don't block me. Allah Akbar.
So to understand this stranger, and that's exactly what he was, a stranger. Uh, the people in the ghetto of Detroit, the poor, the most depressed areas of the ghetto, Detroit, that's where he came. And they were not educated. The average one had no education hardly over uh, grade school. Most of them, the great majority, had under grade school education. Those that joined Mr. Farrar. And uh, he, he, he designed a letter for you to be approved to come into the Nation of Islam, be a member. He designed a letter that forced you to practice handwriting. Now that shows you how uneducated the people were. So he, he made them get interested in improving their handwriting by saying you cannot come in until you write this letter in a good hand so it's legible and re readable and, read and, re and, uh, and can be read without any problem. So some of them had to send their letters many times before getting their letters approved. Yes. So, uh, we, you know, I, what, what the first thing I'm addressing here is conditions in the time. Conditions in that particular time. We're talking about Detroit, place Detroit, Michigan, area of Detroit, the poorest and worst off area in the black community. And, and, and uh, uh, we're, the condition, uneducated, uneducated people. But sincere people, very religious people, and a few very smart. Yes. Few were very smart. In fact, some of them belonged to the uh, Masons, some of the brothers in the 30s, early 30s, joined uh, Mr. Farrad from the Masons. That language attracted the Masons, because they have a similar language. And uh, it, it attracted uh, Eastern stars, the sisters, African-American sisters, black sisters, who also belonged to a similar group, they're all similar. Masons, Eastern Star, and the teachings of Mr. W. D. Farrar. I'm sure that some others came in that, that were also from that same kind of language. Uh, but they weren't Masons, weren't Eastern Star, they were something else. Morse Americans came in. A few Morse Americans joined the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the, the, Mr. Farad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in his time. They joined him too, Morse Americans. And Morse Americans have similar language. They have that similar language. What they say on the surface, or what the word says to the average mind, is not the real meaning. The real meaning is what you get by translation or interpretation. So uh, that, that's, we're talk, that's the time we're talking about. Now, how did Mr. Rod Farad present himself? He first presented himself as Professor Farad. Not as a prophet, not as God. He presented himself as Professor Farad. This is history. We, we, this is all documented. If I had to produce proof of this, I can go get the document and show you. Right on top of the, the book says um, uh, Professor W. D. Farad. Sometimes he called himself W.F. Muhammad. Sometimes he called himself um, W.D. Farah and W.F. Muhammad. Sometimes he called himself Wali Farah Muhammad. He spelled it out, spelled the W out. Wali Farah Muhammad. So he, he, when he, when he, he referred to himself by different names. But he introduced himself, as I said first, as Professor Farah. Professor Farah. Professor is a teacher. An educator. So that's how he produced it, presented himself first. How is Jesus known? Jesus is known as the righteous. Yeah? The son, son of God, and also the son of righteousness. Righteous. As we, he produced the righteous. Uh, and, and what is predicted of, of, of his coming? When he comes, how is he going to come? As a thief in the night. That's what the Bible says. He comes as a thief in the night. He will come as a thief in the night. And, and uh, that means under the cover of darkness. Darkness will be hiding him. And how else is he covered? He's coming to punish the wicked. 
This is his second coming. He's coming to punish the wicked. Yes. Uh, uh, and who, who is he coming, to, what is he coming to steal? He's coming to steal a people from the world. To steal a people from the world. Uh, and uh, he's justified to steal these people from the world because the world stole them from God. Now, I, I'm not saying what Mr. Fraud is, other than I'm saying to you that this is how he came, and I'm going to continue to talk about it. I'm not, I'm not dealing with anything but what's real and recorded for him. Okay? But don't say he was wrong. If I'm wrong, Parada was wrong. I'm just saying what he said. And later I'll be saying what Ahmed Elijah Muhammad said. And if I'm wrong, then Ahmed Elijah Muhammad is wrong. I don't lie. You all should know that by now. I do not lie. And I do not deceive. No, I do not deceive. I'm not going to twist something and form it for my purpose. No, I'm going to give it to you just as it is. Or I won't give it to you at all. 